Turn with me to John 8. Um, <clears throat> again, uh, just, just in preparation, I, you know, again, the, the, the good thing about being in a series is that you, you know where you're going. It's easier to study when you know where you're going. When you don't know where you're going, you've got to figure out where you're going and or just study without knowing where you're going. Amen. Amen. And so, so, so that's where that's the beauty of, of of being on series is that you you know the the direction you're headed. Uh, but when you when you're not on a series, you got to find out where God wants you. And then God, more often than not, here gets us on a series. Uh, so uh, so we we're going to be on this one for a couple of weeks. But I think it's going to take some t- twists and turns along the way. Um, but the area that we're going to talk about here this morning is an area that is, um, again, I, I look at it, and it, it is a, it's a prominent problem in our society. And, uh, and well, let me read the first quote, and it'll give you an idea of where we're going here this morning. Um, opinion is really the lowest form of human knowledge. It requires no accountability, no understanding, and no education. Opinion is really the lowest form of knowledge. It requires no accountability, no understanding, no education. Um, I heard one person say it like this. Opinions are like your backside. Everyone has one and most of them stink. Now, I know that's not real spiritual, but that's opinions because they're, cause they're not based, they don't have to be based on anything. Opinion, in by definition, is a view or a judgment, not necessarily based on fact or knowledge. Matter of fact, most opinions have more to do with how you feel, your feelings, how I feel about things. In other words, most people, when they get into now, again, you, you sit there and say, well, usually when I'm discussing, if I don't know anything about it, I'd be quiet. Well, good. Because truth comes from fact or from knowledge. Opinions don't always come from fact or knowledge. Matter of fact, I think just because they're opinions, that means it's your thoughts, it's your views, it's how I see things. Well, Pastor Thad, this is how I see things. That, that's, that's an opinion. And that don't matter, hill of beans. When I get up here and I'm and I'm teaching up here, uh, one of the words that I just don't I try not to use outside of the fact, like if I'm teaching on Acts and and, and I'm sharing different people's views on something, and I'll say this is the way it, it it came across to me. This is what the Holy Spirit showed me. And usually it's more the Holy Spirit showed me, not here's my opinion. Because again, my opinion and a dollar. We'll get you a cup of coffee at McDonald's. Because my opinion ain't worth it. But the Word of God is. Uh, one, one conservative gentleman, this is his quote, facts don't care about your feelings. Facts don't care about how you feel. Facts are facts. Truth is truth. And that's why over in John chapter 8, verse 32, it says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now again, most people will just quote this scripture and say, Well, you know what it says, the truth will make you free. That's not what it says. That's what it partly says. It says, the truth that you know. Now again, here's the key. We've been, you know, we, we, just, we just talked about um, opinions are the lowest form of knowledge. Facts don't care about your feelings. Well, it's the truth that you know. It's knowledge. It's knowing the truth that will make you free. It's not, it's not your perception. It's not your perception. And I know some people are like, well, Bob, past that, isn't that what the Bible's about? Is it? No. Go over to uh, Ephesians 4 real quick. I want to show you that the Bible's not about, 
People say, well, it's just about how you view it. Beloved, if you're not growing in the Word, if you're not... if if you're not evolving, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying, you know, making up stuff. But if you're not growing in the word, then you're not doing what's necessary. Can I just throw out this at you? You ain't got a good teacher. You ain't got a good shepherd. You ain't got a good, good fivefold. If you're not increasing in your understanding of scripture, if you today understand things exactly the same way that you understood them 20 years ago, 10 years ago, and you've not increased on that, your pastor's not doing his job. He's not stretching you. He's not, he's not, he's not igniting anything in you. It says here in Ephesians 4, it talks about the the, the fivefold ministry offices. It tells you they've been given to you for the equipping of the saints, uh, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And then it tells you their purpose. It tells you how much they're supposed to do. Notice here is this, until we all come into our version of truth. Until we all come into our own opinions of truth. What does unity mean? Una, one. There's one truth. There's one faith. There's one way of operating. And he says... That you all need to be growing, maturing, getting stronger, getting more information until there's oneness. I don't know. Our denomination has set the rules 150 years ago and we cannot waver off of those. Then you're not growing into the unity of the faith. Somehow, some way, you've got the delusion. People, people look at us and go, "Oh, what? You, see, what you're doing is new." No, it's not new. There's nothing new under the sun. That's why we use scripture. <laughs> That's why we use scripture to talk about healing. That's why we use scripture to talk about prosperity and wealth. That's why we listen. We don't have to. We don't have to mix up and distort scripture to back prosperity people have to mix up and distort scripture to say you god wants you poor (laughs) beloved there is a unity of the word of god there's a unity of faith that god wants his church to become uh, to to come into and When we are busier, listen, if you're looking at most churches, it seems like things are getting more diverse instead of coming together. There's getting to be more opinions. But here's the way I see it. Listen to me. If you're reading the scripture to try to give you reasons so that you can drink alcohol, you've got a drinking problem. I'm saying this to the camera. (laughs) If you are reading scripture to try to prove that you have, that that you can drink, you've got a drinking problem. You do not have a, I want to be closer to Jesus problem. got quiet in this Methodist church. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> all right. All right. So, listen. We are not to be getting more opinionated and going off script more. Matter of fact, as time comes nearer to the end, we need to be aware. Of, we're going to get into this hopefully this morning. We need to become aware of that and tighten things up and become more unity of what the Word of God says. It is too tempting in this day and age to have your opinion. That's what social media has done. Social media gives everybody an unhealthy, um, an unhealthy view of their opinion. I love social media. I love it. I, I love, I love sense 
Facebook, and uh, I guess Facebook is the main one, has, has, has become friends on that. I have become, I've come in more contact with people that I went to high school with that I hadn't heard from in 30 years. And it's, it's, it's good. I'm, I've enjoyed it. I've, I've liked it. There, there's, there's friends that I went to college with uh, that, that, that I've become friends with and, and, and it was, was able to, I've been able to contact and have conversations with. And it's great. I mean, I, I, went to college, I went to college in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I went to high school in Pekin, Illinois. And I'm living in Moorhead, Kentucky. And so, so most of the people, I know mean, some of y'all, you know, grew up here, stayed here. You go to the grocery store, you, you see people that you went to school with. And, uh, and I don't get that privilege. So, so it's been good. But because of it, because of social media, people think that their, that their opinions means they've got wisdom. And they don't. Opinions based on feelings are the lowest form of intelligence, of knowledge. I, 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 I always, you see somebody post something about, here's, and I'm not, I'm not going to get into it, but you I post stuff on, online that have knowledge, that facts, an article. And people will still give their opinion on uh, uh, Facebook has so many, what is it, epidemiologists on it now that know how diseases work, that never went to college, barely passed, got a D in biology, but they read four articles that are slanted towards their view on things. They didn't read any other ones. Didn't read the other ones that went. They just read the ones that said, see, I told you I was right. <laughs> but they, because they can give their opinion, they feel like their opinion is essential. The Word of God says it's the truth or the knowledge that you have, the knowing that comes along with truth that will make you free, that will move you into the areas of God that he wants you to move into. Not just your opinion on here's how I see it. Well, Pastor Thad, here's, here's how I see it. No. It doesn't mean everybody has a right to their opinion, but it doesn't make your opinion right. Beloved, I'm going to tell you this, and this is what we're, this is what we're building on here today. The greatest danger in the church is not the virus, is not social unrest, it's not politics, it's the opinions of man. I've named this series, or at least this sermon, The Deception of Opinions. Because when your opinion gets to a level of being higher than what the Word of God says, you have moved yourself from from under his guidance, under his blessings, and under his goodness. He tells us, people say, oh, but I'm just so busy. Pastor Thad, I'm just so busy. I got so much going on. I just can't make it to church now, now two times right now, two times a week. I just can't. My, my effort right here, just a quick commercial, is to retool Sunday night. I don't know how we're doing it yet. I don't know. But we're, but we're, we're going to do something, but I don't know. I got to get some direction. A um, couple thoughts I've had is turn Sunday nights into our our youth night here, and just go all out and do stuff on Sunday nights here for the youth. Another thought I had was once a month fellowship here on Sunday nights. Another thought I had was change nothing. Another thought I had was I, there, there's a lot of thoughts I've had. So so just pray for wisdom on that. But two times a week, Pastor, here's, here's my opinion. 
I go to church once. I'm a Christian. I live for God. I'm not going to backslide, Pastor Thad. I go to church once. You don't have to. Here's my opinion. You don't have to go to church to be a Christian. Now, all those have aspects of truth in it. But Hebrews chapter 10 tells us, don't forsake the assembling of yourself together as the men or some of you are. Even more so. But see, you don't understand that, that Jesus didn't know. God didn't know that things would become so busy now. Then why did he put that even more so as you see the day approaching? You know why? Because he knew exactly what was going to happen in the end times. There was going to be a busyness and there was going to be... And we're going to look at some scriptures here, what he, what he knew was going to happen in the end times. He knew exactly what was going to happen in the end times. All right. So your, so your opinion, if it's not based on truth, is solely an opinion, is, is nothing. Go to John. Let's, we're going we're gonna to really, I, I, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to treat you, well, I'm going to treat you, I'm going to preach. I know I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay it out at very foundational, very basic as, as this goes. Because I want us to get to understand why, when, when we're dealing with opinions, why it's so detrimental. Some of you may have thought, ah, I don't think that's true, Pastor Thad. It's, it's absolutely true. Because there's pastors in their pulpits today, this morning, that are preaching opinion. And they're letting their congregation know, well, in my opinion, it's okay for you to drink. And there are people that alcohol has a lock on. And that pastor is being responsible for keeping it on them. I'm not, I'm not saying that God doesn't love you. I'm just simply saying that that's why God said, don't be so quick to want to stand up here and teach people because you'll be held to a responsibility what you tell them. Pastors are up here saying, giving their opinion that it's okay to live how you want to live. Do what you want to do. Hey, if it feels good, do it. You know, do you understand that used to be called the playboy philosophy? And now people are preaching it from their church. That, hey, God still loves you. If it's something you can't control, God, yeah, God loves you. It doesn't mean you're right with him. It doesn't mean... But opinions in the pulpit are leading congregations, thousands, down a wide road that leads to destruction. See, well, okay. John, so, so that's what we're dealing with. John, 10, John 17, verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Sanctify them through the truth. Thy word is truth. So, first thing is, is that when we're dealing with the truth will set you free, or when we're dealing with knowledge, understanding what kind of knowledge do we need to have? Okay, it doesn't hurt. Jessica has knowledge. Je- Je- Jessica gets, um, you know, she gets calls from family. Uh, she needs to start charging, sending invoices, because they'll call and they say, hey, I've got this situation, got this problem, i got this pain. She'll say, go to the ER or go to the doctor. But I was wondering if you would help me so I could save some money. They've never given you anything. Saving money means that it's less money, you know. You may spend fifty dollars going to the the ER, a hundred dollars going to the ER. At least give her twenty five bucks. Come on, if you want her opinion. But she's got knowledge. She's got knowledge that's helped people. She's got knowledge that saved probably my dad's life. That's good knowledge. 
the Word of God is truth. It's, it, it is a higher order, but again, she, when, she's, when, when, when people call her, she gives information, not going, well, in my opinion, here's what I do. She says, according to your symptoms and my knowledge, here's what I would tell you to do. Here it tells us that the Word of God, what it says in those 66 books, what it says in between those pages is truth. And see, here's the beauty of it. How many have ever heard, well, you know, times change. Times change. You, you know, uh, remember back, I, they might still do it back in eastern Kentucky, back where Pastor Elise is from. Remember when they would take care, what did they take care of by throwing leeches on you? All sorts of stuff. Throw a leech on Bled them, bleed them. When was the last time they did that at the at St. Clair? And probably haven't done it in a few years. Because they because they've because they they've moved on. They they've got they've got other other ways to treat things now. In other words, what worked maybe fifty hundred years ago, or what they perceived to work, what they perceived as fact, they change. Now, I could say it this way. How about, how about, are there any medications they used to use 20 years ago that now they realize, you know, maybe we shouldn't have used those medications? And so a fact that was helping people years ago began shifting, changing, and now that fact no longer, now there's a new fact. That's what happens with facts, is that learn stuff. How many, how many remember a long time ago when better was bad for you? How many remember a long time ago when better was good for you? How many remember just after that when better was bad for you? How many remember just after that when better was good for you? Facts keep changing, don't they? They can be facts. And there can be levels of facts. But, better, that's right. Better, better make, does, it does, yeah. Are, are, are you following me on this, things? Facts can change. Facts can shift. And it doesn't mean they weren't facts before. They were the facts as we understood them before. Truth doesn't change. There has never been a time in the history of mankind where 2 plus 2 didn't equal 4. Never. There was never a time. They maybe did not understand that fact or that truth, but there's never been a time. There's never been a time where that was not the truth. Why? Because at the beginning, that's how things were created. Now, what I, what, when it comes to the Word of God, the Word of God is not fact. Where it, wherein it changes or shifts according to time. The Word of God doesn't change because now we're in 2020 and things are different now. We got 72 genders now. God didn't understand that back when the beginning, when he said, I'm going to make male and female. Now we got, now we got 72 genders and, and the Bible doesn't take that into consideration. Except that did back in the beginning where it said, I'm going to create man in my image. He, I'm going to make him male and female. He created them male and female. Male and female. And he said, that's truth. It's unchangeable. It's undeniable. Are you with me? Thy word is truth. When he speaks it, that it is in, unchangeable. There is never a time... Now, some people would say, well, Pastor that I thought you said that we're going to be increasing in knowledge. Uh -huh. We're going to be increasing in understanding. His truth is located in those 66 books. It's just that our, our traditions have made the Word of God of none effect. We have made the truth of... We've been living a lie because we didn't understand it based on our traditions. There's a lot of Christians who've been living poor lives and thinking they've been pleasing God by their poorness. 
And they may have been pleasing God by a lot of things they did. They may have been pleasing God on their, on their relationship with Him and on their prayer times and their prayer lives. They may have been pleasing God on their witnessing. But they're missing it in regards to their wealth. Because the truth says that He became poor so that you could become physically rich. But see, tradition, time, that truth stayed the same. What God was wanting is he was wanting some people to grow in things to get to that point where they understood the truths of sowing and reaping. You don't get reaping without the sowing. If anybody in this room thinks, well, I'm just going to sit around until God makes me rich. If you're not sowing, no, you're not. It could be a fact that a certain stock went up yesterday. Does, is that set in stone forever and ever and ever, Doc? No, because it could have plummeted today or tomorrow. So you say, you say, well, Pastor Thad, I, I've chosen to take my 10% and put it in the stock market. And then, hey, that's cool. If, I mean, I, and it's not cool, but you know what I'm saying. If you want to do that, that's your choice. But now you're living under the window or the umbrella of what it does. If the, in in uh, March, hopefully he pulled stuff out. Because when, and then it's come back up, and then it's come back down. And it's come back up. And it's come back down. Just like butter. It's like butter, right? So if, you, if, you, if that's the choice you want to make, then you're subject to the inconsistencies of the market. But the word of God faileth not. It doesn't change. It's truth. Hallelujah. Whoo. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Amen. I, I started just jotting stuff down. I, I do this a lot. I just, I, scripture after scripture after scripture. And all I was left with yesterday at some point was just a stack of papers. And I'm like, what do I do with this, Lord? All I got is information. I like it when he preach, preaches the sermon for me, though. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. It says, most scripture, thank you, all scripture. <laughs> I just like doing that to make sure you're not. I, I want to hear someone say, hey, amen, most scripture, praise God. You weren't listening. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. I love that. Every bit of thing that has been written down in Scripture in those 99 books. Did I say 99? I'm sorry, standing on my head. Things got turned upside down. <laughs> no, I was, I, was, I was quizzing you. I was testing you. Good job, Pastor Lisa. Everything inside those 66 books of the Bible... Actually, I was trying to say 99 again, so apparently God said, okay, enough's enough. Get back in this. Is put there for you to understand, for you to correct what needs to be corrected, change what needs to be changed, instruct what needs to be instructed. Why? Verse 17, that the man of God, everybody say, I'm a man of God. Ladies, say, even though I'm a female, I'm a man of God. <laughs> that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So everything in Scripture, everything in the truth is given to us to correct us when we're wrong, to correct us when we, can I say it like this, have an opinion that 
goes contrary to it. I'm going to read it out of the Passion Translation. Because we need more passion in our preaching. It says, Every scripture has been written by the Holy Spirit, the breath of God. And I love that, the breath of God. I, I read somebody... Uh, 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 somebody said it like this. Said in, now, you, correct me if I'm wrong on this, Jessica. But inside of every breath, they said if I take a balloon and I breathe into that, um, into that balloon and put my breath into that balloon, in that balloon has my breath, but it also has my DNA because of what came out of me. My DNA is sitting in what I just breathed into. He says here, he says, the word of God, the truth, has the very DNA of Almighty God in it. DNA is there to reproduce, to create that. Amen? It will empower you by its instruction and correction, giving you the strength to take the right direction and lead you deeper into the path of godliness. Then you will be God's servant, fully mature and perfectly prepared to fulfill any assignment that God gives you. I like that. I like that. There's a lot of Christians not ready to take the assignments that God has, has set for them to do because they're busy living in their opinions of things. They're busy not, not reproducing the truth of God that's inside of them, that's been breathed inside of them. They're not reproducing what God, what God has from, they're reproducing what their opinion has. If Pastor Elisa taught her fifth graders, said, okay, forget everything you've learned. Forget everything. I'm going to teach you a new math. Two plus two equals five. Now, she could say it like she's convinced on it. She's not preaching the truth. She's not teaching the truth. And, she, and, and every student, take a line from Billy Madison, the great Adam Sandler movie. Every student in that room would have been stupider for listening to her. Because she was just throwing out her opinion in contrast to what the truth said. And everybody was going to be, everybody was going to have our, but, but, but Miss, Mrs. Bailey said this. Well, Mrs. Bailey was wrong. Unless she spoke the truth. So when we give our opinion, we will not accomplish that which the Holy Spirit. We can maybe build a good church. There are a lot of preachers out there building really big churches. And again, a lot of the prophets are saying they're getting ready like Humpty Dumpty for a great fall. Because your opinions can't produce what God has said. See, truth stands. Opinion fails. And so if your church has been built upon the opinion of man, it will fail when things hit the fan. Whoo! Go to 2 Peter 1. I had a word. And I just had one word that I started studying on. And I was shocked how much the scriptures moved around that word of opinion. Opinion versus truth. Opinion producing deception. Producing the works of man and failure and destruction. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 20. It says, knowing... This first, that no prophecy of the scriptures of private interpretation. And again, that's just simply saying it's not a man. It, 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 it's not just down to what a, what a man says. It's not a matter of like, you know, here's what I see. Every scripture is bigger than you or I, bigger than your or my concepts of it. But then it goes on and it says, For prophecy came not in old times by the will of man, but by holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost. The Amplified Version in verse 21 says it like this, For no prophecy ever originated because some man willed it to, do, willed it 
to do so, it never came by human impulse. So when we're reading the truth, when we're reading Scripture, it's not because some man sat down and started just jotting down some ideas and thought, you know, hey, you know what, it would be good if I told the church to settle down and, and, to, and to not do this and not do that. And, and you know, it would just be a really good idea. And it just was just him thinking it would be a great idea. There's no Scripture. There's not one place in Scripture that that's the truth. It came... But men spoke from God who were born along, moved, and impelled by the Holy Spirit. Every jot and every tittle in the Scripture is God-breathed, God-DNA. That's why it doesn't change. The problem today is that a large portion of our culture does not really believe that the Spirit is, that the Bible is inspired by the Word of God. Because if you believe it's inspired, it will change your way of life. And it is one thing, now there was a time back in the 50s and 40s that even the heathen were like, yeah, we'll lose, use the Bible as a, as a guide. And now sinners are acting like sinners. But see, here's the problem, is half the church world is acting like their opinions usurp authority. Usurp the word. And that's where it becomes a, 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 I, I just say it's the biggest threat to the move of God. It's people getting hooked up to their, go to Proverbs 18 getting hooked up to their opinions and their thoughts and their concepts. Hallelujah. Proverbs 18, verse 2. It says, A fool hath no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. In other words, if you just take that last phrase, that his heart may discover itself, it's saying that what's in his heart is what he believes. If you look at the New Living Translation of that one, it says, fools have no interest in understanding. They only want to air their own opinions. All they care about is what they think is truth. And what does God call it? A fool. (laughs) When your opinion goes contrary to the word of God and you're going to hold on to your opinion, it's okay to have the wrong opinion. Just as long as you're willing to have it changed. But when when your opinion goes contrary to the word of God and you refuse to allow it to change, God says that's foolishness. Amen. Amen. Opinions have demoted and relegated the demoted and regular, relegated the word of God to a diminished position in the modern mindset. The word of God has become one opinion among many. You can have your opinion, just don't force it on me. We heard that one with a new Supreme Court nominee. nominee um, people's thought pattern is, hey, it's fine if you want to have your way of thinking. A, 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 a biblical listen if you have no morals how can you judge just a point of interest but but you cannot you cannot force your th- belief system on me that's someone's opinion cuz cuz it's not a belief system it's the truth it's the truth breathed by the one that created the heavens and the earth The world is supposed to think this way. The church needs to. Why am I preaching this? I'm preaching this, first of all, because I got a group of people in here that God has called to be revivalists. God has called us to do something that's bigger than ourselves. And we can't do it if if we're operating on our own opinions. We can only do it if we are tapped into the truth. I'm doing it because, I'm speaking this because this word will go beyond these walls. 
And, and there's some people out there that need to hear this truth. Don't be fooled by the opinions. And don't go, don't, don't make your opinion the final authority. But the third thing, and we're going to deal with this probably next week ish. The third reason is that we need to recognize the deception of this age and the deception that's going on around us. And just because someone, go to, uh, we'll come back there in a second. (laughs) Go to 1 Corinthians 14, verse 10. This is one of my favorite, because I just love the word that's used here. I never read this in any other translation except for the King James because it's such a cool word. But in verse 10 it says, There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in this world, and none of them is without signification. In other words, all the voices that we hear all sound good. They sound significant. They all sound like they make sense. Have you ever heard anybody try to explain something to you, and for a second you're like, oh, I never thought of it that way. Hmm. And then the more you think about it, you're like, hold it, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Because they, because it sounded significant. It sounded, all these voices are. And that's the danger. Is because, because they sound that way, they can sneak in and they can start hurting and, 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 and taking destinies and changing them. Go to, uh, I'll, I'll go back to that one in a second. Go to Genesis chapter 3. I'll talk to you a, little, for a moment here. I'll show you somebody whose destiny was changed because of, because of listening to an opinion. You already know what I'm going to talk about. Genesis chapter 3. There's only one thing that happens in that chapter. But go to verse 1. It says, Now the serpent was more sneaky, subtle, mm, than any of the beasts of the fields which God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, uh, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Okay, so I, I wanted to point out to you that the first thing the devil ever is recorded saying in the history of mankind was a lie. And if we don't understand that, then, then we're not going to understand anything else. Because the only thing that God, God, God says, I'm not a man that I should lie. And, and so, so the only thing God operates in is truth. So if he said it, it's truth. If the enemy says it, it's a lie. So the enemy loves to drop these thoughts, these concepts. Anybody in this room that is hungry for truth, or for information, you are susceptible to the lie. Because the devil will make sure the Google search pops up and the one that catches your attention is gives you an opinion that you don't need to be having. Because that's the, the, the enemy. They're, they're walking around in the garden and the, and the snake goes, Hey, y'all. Just want to talk to you for a second. Is it true that God said you can't eat of any of the trees of the garden? Starting to insert lies. Because if you hear enough of them, and that's what you hear, it's not going to be long before you believe it. And the woman said on the serpent, so she knew. We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the gardens, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, eat not, neither... Or are you going to die? So she knew what God had said. She knew the truth. And she should have. Listen, do you understand? At that juncture, Adam and Eve had never heard a lie. When Jesse and I lived down in Texas, we would. Remember what I said, they never heard a lie, just in case I get caught up in my illustration. 
And the one thing we learned when we were down in Texas is that everybody in southern Texas has got Hispanic heritage. They all have black hair. They all have that dark skin. All of them. Now, there are a few that got planted down there. We were one of them. But they all are the Hispanic-looking people. So we came up, we're, we're down there for six to eight months or something like that. We came back up to visit family to come probably to a word rally or whatever. We came up here and, and, and we, we just thought we'd do some shopping at Fat Mall. So we went walking through Fat Mall. And I was like, something is weird here. Something's different. And I could not, it was just felt weird. And then it hit me. I thought, hey, there's black people here. There's white people. There's very few Hispanic people. I think probably I saw a Hispanic person. That's what's, it's like there's color. Because something that I hadn't been used to showed up, and I knew something was different. I couldn't put my finger on it. She had never heard a lie in her lifetime. She had never heard anything but G, but the God the Father coming and walking with them in the cool of the garden, giving them truth. That's all she ever knew. And the first thing the serpent says to her, which again is probably the first animal that talked to her, so I don't know. I'm just like, that, that, would, have, that, would, that would have been a light on too. Is a lie that she knew was not truth. That's why... 2 Corinthians 10 says, cast down those things that you know don't line up with the Word of God. That's my paraphrase. But cast them down. Don't let them stay there for another second. Because if you let them stay there for another second, you are allowing an opinion, a thought, a concept that goes contrary to the Word of God to keep coming into you. And when that keeps coming into you, there's going to be a time where you yield to it and it changes your destiny. Verse 4. The serpent said, why did she let him, why not go ahead and take the garden hoe to the snake? (laughs) Why not? The serpent said back to her, now this is his opinion. This is not truth. It's just his thoughts. You're not going to die. You see here, here, here's, here's more. For God knows that in the day you eat thereof, your eyes will be opened and you'll be as gods, knowing good and evil. He knows that. And he's trying to keep stuff from you. No. No, he was trying to get them to their destiny. He was trying to get them to their destiny. And the only way you can get to your destiny is by yielding to and understanding the truth of the word of God. Outside of that, you can't do it. You can't do it through the opinions of man. And so when the enemy came in with his opinion and his thoughts, and the woman, oh, she let him keep talking. Quit letting the enemy lie to you. Quit listening to people that are just spouting off their opinions on things. It's destructive to you. You are not being rude walking out. All right. Verse 5. Verse 6. There you go. And when the woman saw, she yielded to the opinion. She ate. And when she ate, they were ashamed. And they're ashamed. There was no shame before then. But Adam and Eve, because of yielding, and Adam was there too. We know Adam was there. He's standing right next to him. They're inseparable. They lost their destiny. Because of the deception. And beloved, the voice that you, that you believe more than anybody is yours. So when you're busy just spouting your opinion, it gets stronger and stronger and stronger. And you get further and further and further from what God has for you. Goodness gracious. 
Let, let, me, let me go one more passage and then we'll, we'll have to wrap it up. I didn't get to kind of, well, I got, we're well on our way in our series. Amen. Go to Galatians chapter 1. A lot of times when the Apostle Paul writes to the churches, he kind of uh, chit-chats with them for a while, gives a greeting, tells them how good they've been doing, you know, what they've been doing, how lot of stuff. But the book of Galatia is different. To, to the church of Galatia is different. Because the Apostle Paul writes to them. He starts off by saying, you know, some stuff that are like, hey, it's Paul here. You know, uh, grace, peace be to you. And then in verse 6, he comes in full bore. He comes in with both guns. I'm going to read it out of the New Living Translation, uh, John, just to let you know. Verse 6. Um, he comes in ready, loaded for bear. And it should tell us something. That what he's getting ready to say here, he didn't want to put it the last of the letter to where, you know, um, it was 18 pages, you know, for, for those that know that reference, that, it, that, that the meaning would be missed because we saved it for the end of the letter and, and he's been rambling on, sing, single line, right? It, that, that be, he, it, it, if you want the most important thing, be right up front. And so he doesn't wait until sometime further down in the letter to, to get to this. He says it, I mean, he goes, hey, how you all doing? I am appalled. He comes right in at it. But notice what he says. I am shocked. I think, uh, I think the King James Version says astonished, which is the picture just is that, is that, um, is that this is not, this has got him. He said, I am shocked that you are turning away so soon from God who called you to himself through the loving mercy of Christ. You are following, listen, you are following a different way that pretends to be good news. Man, that gets me thinking about some of the messages that are preached in the pulpits today. I got some good news for you. You don't have to do anything to be a Christian. You just have to, you know, Say the sinner's prayer. And you're saved by grace. He did it. You don't have to do anything. What a, what a destructive way. What an destructive, destructive opinion that is. Because why else would he say, be ye holy? As I am holy. Why else would he say, this is the way. Walk ye in it. If you don't have to do anything else. But I've got a problem. Then why would he say, cast all your cares upon me? Why would he say, why would he tell you that, that he's, he's taken your burdens and bore your sorrows? Why would he say that kind of stuff? If we're supposed to be living with, with those habits. It's deception. It's, it's, it's. A different, I like how they say it. It's not even news. It's a different way that pretends to be good news. But it's, verse 7, but it's not good news at all. You are being fooled by those who deliberately twist the truth. They, they give you their opinion concerning Christ. He come, I mean, this is six verses into it it's the second paragraph and he comes in and he says hey how y'all doing i am shocked verse eight this is how big this is he says let god's curse fall on anyone including us Hmm. Or even an angel from heaven who preaches any different kind of gospel, good news, than the one that we preach to you. I say again that we ha- what we have said before, if anyone preaches any other good news other than the ones, uh, 
uh, than the one you welcomed, let that person be cursed. Scripture, the the the, the new te- or the King James version says, "Let be accursed," and that just simply means, I mean, um, doomed to destruction. If anyone comes with an opinion that comes contrary to what the Word of God says, that comes to you saying, hey, 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 all that stuff, yeah, no, you don't need to do all that kind of stuff. No, 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 no. No, you, you, you're free from that. You can, you, can, you can drink, you can chew, and you can go with girls that do. And be free from it. Praise God. Isn't that exciting? No, no, no. That's good news that goes contrary to the word, the word of God. And that's no, and, and verse 7 says, that's not any good news at all. Why? Because it will lead to your destruction. It will lead to your, it will lead to your destiny being missed. We won't get to it this week, so I can say it this week. It says there's the, there are those who, I don't, I don't want to move off that statement there real quick because I want to finish there, uh, but so don't, don't turn here. Um, having the form of godliness, but they deny the power. What are we supposed to do? From such, turn away. Don't let them keep telling you the lies. Don't let them keep pouring their opinions on you. All right. Paul's not fooling around. That's why in Galatians 3, he says, Are you so foolish that you started in the Spirit? Are you going to be now made perfect because you move over into an opinion of man? Let me, let's finish with this scripture. And I'll wrap it. Second, Corinthians, Second Chronicles 7. Jesse, you want to come to the piano? Hallelujah. Let's do that top one there. I read this. I heard someone say, don't ask God to heal your land. God said he will heal your land. And, I, and I, I thought about that. I thought there's truth there. But in, in 2 Chronicles seven fourteen, it says, If my people, so who's he talking to? Us. Which are called by my name. Shall humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, will forgive their sins, and will heal their land. And so many scripture, so many Sermons have been preached on praying, seeking your face, turn from your wicked ways. So many sermons. But that wasn't the first one listed. First one listed is humble yourself. Recognize that your opinion is here and there, you know. It's based on experience usually. Your opinion will never usurp the truth. And until his people get to that point that they understand their opinion, their view, their thoughts, their concepts are are not equal to the word. But I heard this person say this. Okay, that's fine. Was it is it truth? Or is it their opinion? You understand that a lot of people that, that used to believe in healing and don't believe in healing anymore, they got their feelings hurt because maybe they didn't get healed or someone that they loved didn't didn't get healed. And so their opinion, the truth, was skewed by a lie, an opinion. And now it's become their opinion and it's moved them away from the truth. 
until the body of Christ humbles themselves and says, if it's in the Word, that's what matters. It, that, that's all that matters to me is if it's in the Word. If it's not in the Word and someone's trying to get it to me and, and speak it to me, I ain't listening. Until the church gets to that point, beloved, that last point, we're praying all we want to, but we're praying our opinions. We're seeking His face all we want to, all all we can think of doing, but we're seeking His face in concept with our opinions. And, And we've redefined wicked ways based on our opinions. And until we get to that point that we humble ourselves and say, God, it's not my will, but yours be done. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? How much do you think Satan was lying to Jesus in the garden? Saying he's God. You know he's got other ways. You know he's got other ways. He doesn't, you don't have to go to the cross. Why would he have you? Does that make sense to you at all? And it doesn't really make sense to me at all. It makes sense to us now, doesn't it? Because cursed is everything that hangs on a tree. He took the curse so we wouldn't have to. Let's stand together. Boy, I think we got off and running on this series. Hallelujah. So I've got, there's going to be a couple sections of it that we're going to get into this i think it's going to be real exciting uh uh, but um hallelujah hallelujah let's just love on him this morning uh uh, allow him just to you know again bring this thing home strengthen this thing in us amen stir us up hallelujah here we go we love the way you move Sing it again. Sing it. We've seen the way you move. We have seen the way you move. Full of goodness, full of mercy. We can never get enough. Oh, God of grace. God, let the weight of your glory. Oh, let the weight of your glory come settle on us now. We stand in awe for you are holy and your kindness overwhelms the weight of your glory. Let the weight of your glory come settle on us now. We stand in awe for you are holy and your kindness overwhelms. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. Your word is life. Your word is truth. Your word removes us from our destructions. Whoo! Those things that are destroy us and move us away from our destiny. If we will simply stay in your word, stay in your system, stay in your ways. We will move towards destiny and not towards destruction. 
Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, I pray for your spirit. I've done everything I know to do. I've said every word that I've, I feel like I was supposed to say. From this point on, let your spirit be the one that roots these words in our hearts. That we have our guard up for deception of opinions. And that we watch. What do we really believe? What's our view? Because if it's contrary to the word, then it's just an opinion. And it's doomed for destruction. We've got some destinies to fulfill. And so it's your word. It's your word. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I'm glad I came this morning. Praise God. I, I, I do all that study in the days before, a couple days before, and get all that stuff in me. And it never comes out how I think it's going to come out. It always comes out just a little bit different. Um, and so I always can't, I can't wait for that. I, I can't wait. And I can't wait till I get to edit some of this stuff where I get to listen to it again. Hallelujah. It's, it's as good the second time. I'm telling you what. Go, go on our website. Listen to it again. Because uh, it's good the second time. Amen. Sometimes better because you catch some stuff. Because it's not 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Amen. I love you guys so much. So much. So much. Go with God. Walk in His blessings. Prosper. Be in healthy. And your soul prospers. I love you guys. God bless you.